From L.A. to Piscataway, all Big Ten, all year long. This is Big Ten Ten. Hate is a strong word. It is. You close your eyes and you think of the word hate. And what do you think of? Do you hate something? What do you think of? Does someone hate something else? What do you think of? You think of some pretty strong feelings when you think of hate. I feel that Texas A&M is pretty darn close to that when you talk about their relationship with Texas. Listen to the Texas A&M fight song, and that should show you everything you need to know about the relationship between Texas A&M and the Texas Longhorns. That hate is why Texas A&M left the Big 12 when they did. They wanted to separate from Texas and the stranglehold politically that they had on that league at that point in time. That's why that they are current members of the SEC, and that's why that they did not go with Texas and a whole bunch of schools, maybe out west, to join the Pac-12 in the late 2000s and the early 2010s as well. But in a recent edition of that SEC podcast, ESPN's Paul Feinbaum entered maybe a little bit of motivation for yet another conference change now that Texas is in the SEC. They were promised. And uh, Texas would never come in. But things change. Yeah. And, and, and it's A&M's fault. A&M was so successful in the SEC, Cousin Shane, that uh, Texas said, we want some of that. I mean, it really, yeah. it, it, I mean, they, Texas in 2010 was heading to the Pac-12. I mean, they had already commandeered uh, a bunch of schools because they wanted to be more aligned with the Pac-12 academics, uh, the Stanfords, mm-hmm. the Cals, yeah. right. <laughs> what's now in the ACC. <laughs> uh, and they finally realized we, we need to do something. And Texas could have gone to the Big Ten, ACC. I mean, all this nonsense that we heard from, oh, well, the SEC. The SEC didn't do anything but answer a phone call uh, from yeah. their their attorneys answered a phone call. The same phone call that uh, that everybody else got. They were they were on the prowl. They were leaving them, and they were going to go somewhere. We've all seen a true crime show, whether it be the older classic murder mysteries or Criminal Minds or CSI or the hundreds and hundreds, it seems, of true crime documentaries on Netflix and Peacock. We've all seen them. What's one word and one thing that the interviewees tend to talk about fairly early within a crime case. Motive. Motive. What was the motive for this to happen? Now, there has been some talk tossed around about, hey, could Texas A&M, if they wanted more money or if they wanted this, could they move to the Big Ten? But nothing substantial. And then I see this clip came out about maybe a promise that was made to Texas A&M that Texas would never join the conference. And that could possibly be a motive for A&M to make a move in the future. Of course, the only move out of the SEC that the Texas A&M Aggies would make is, of course, to our beloved Big Ten. Now, let's start first from the Big Ten point of view. Getting this Texas A&M program would check a lot of boxes to what the Big Ten historically looks for in a conference realignment candidate. Let's start first with the first word in their university's name, Texas. Having a school in the state of Texas in the Big Ten would do a lot. Now, I know markets is not as big of a deal anymore. We want eyeballs, we want big brands, and we want big matchups, right? It's not so much about cable boxes like it was when Rutgers and Maryland uh, were added to this conference, but I think it's safe to say Having a Big Ten presence in Texas would draw eyeballs around to the entire state as well. And Texas A&M, right, that is a big-time fan base. That is a very passionate fan base that cares about their Aggies. You might think the yell leaders are a little bit weird. You might think the war him is a little bit weird. But there's you can say that until you're blue in the face. But I think there's one thing that you need to say is this is a extremely passionate fan base 
that cares about their team. And of course, that's there's a lot of other Big Ten teams. It's almost like having another Nebraska. I'm sure everybody would love to have another Nebraska, right? Some people may take that seriously. Some people may think that's sarcasm. But I digress and I move on. Academically and research-wise, right? That's a big deal to the Big Ten Conference as well. Look at the four additions. Really outside of Oregon, Washington, USC, and UCLA are very strong academically and on the research front as well. Texas A&M is a big research university. Texas A&M is a member of AAU, right? It seems like every time we talk about Big Ten expansion, those are the three letters that we bring up as well. So you check that box on the academic and research front as well from the Big Ten perspective. They're a solid football program. I think they would add depth to this conference uh, as well. And of course, they have Big Ten roots in their athletic director's office with former Nebraska AD Trev Alberts in there as well. Now you also have to look at it from the Texas A&M point of view as well and what could be some positives for them coming over to the Big Ten conference. Number one, do they feel like they're one overshadowed by Texas? And number two, do they feel like that they are a more regional program in a regional conference? Now, the SEC has expanded, right, their regional footprint, right? They've expanded west to Texas. Uh, They've gone up to Missouri, right? You know, in the 90s, they went out to South Carolina. So from their original 10, they have expanded, but it is still a very southern, regional type of conference as well that exists with the SEC, where Texas A&M currently resides right now. If Texas A&M wanted to be more of a national brand, right, if they wanted to step outside again from the shadow that is Texas, right, being now that Texas would be the premier brand, SEC brand within the state, now that that's the case, they might want to step out of their shadow again and become more national. Doesn't become more national than the Big Ten when you got the State University of New Jersey on one side of your league and you're bordering the Pacific Ocean on the other side of your league. The reality of the situation is that Texas A&M, who they are, what their brand is, what their identity is, they fit in extremely well to the SEC. When I look at Texas A&M right now, I say that's an SEC school. I think rivalries are a big part of the drawing power from a television standpoint. And when you look at Texas being added to the conference and having this decade plus where they've been apart and now they're coming together, with Texas and Texas A&M back as a rivalry, that pays for itself. Texas A&M has rivalries against Texas. They've got rivalries against LSU. They've got rivalries against Arkansas. I feel like bringing rivalries together is one thing that the SEC has done really well. The SEC has focused on expanding their regionality. The Big Ten has focused on expanding nationally. Like if Texas A&M were to leave the SEC or if they had the motivation, they wanted to get outside of Texas as a shadow, they wanted to play a more national conference, et cetera, right? They wanted to do all of that. You're leaving behind rivalry games against LSU, against Alabama, against Texas, against Arkansas, regional rivals that your fan base gets really hyped up for. And now who are you playing of any, you're playing USC, Oregon, Ohio State, Nebraska, like Nebraska is the closest thing to a rivalry that Texas A&M would have going into this thing. I would just like to see rivalries renewed within conference realignment and come back. I know Stanford and Cal will not be added during the television contract. It would have to be during the renegotiation. Like if we see some South Eastern teams, if we see some teams in that segment of the country, Miami's been rumored, Florida State's been rumored, Clemson, et cetera, North Carolina, et cetera, have been rumored. I would like to see a cluster of them come together so we retain some of these rivalries and we just don't have teams out 
on islands. Like Texas A&M would be out on an island. And they fit much better geographically. They fit much better culturally within this as well. Thanks for watching Big Ten Ted, where it's all Big Ten all year long. Make sure to like the video to spread the word of Big Ten Ted to the masses and subscribe to the channel for updates on Big Ten content that drops every day.